Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the Productivity 1000 Series PLC Modbus TCP Ethernet Communications. And this Productivity Series PLC comes with four built-in communication ports for easy connectivity to your PC or various industrial networks. Now the Ethernet protocols like Modbus TCP can be utilized with the RJ45 port on the PLC. Modbus TCP is an open published protocol that uses the server or the master to a client or slave architecture. And it's a very common protocol used in industrial automation controls. Now we will we'll be using this RJ45 Ethernet port to communicate to a click PLC um, and Modbus uh, TCP will be our protocol used on the Ethernet communication media. The Proactivity 1000 series will be the server and the, the Click PLC will be the client. We will be creating a network between the two PLCs and a heartbeat will be used so if communication is lost the server or slave which is our, our click PLC will know that and signal an output. Now the throughput time will also be timed using a small program in the click PLC. So you'll soon, soon see how the productivity series of PLCs is the best way to handle communications to other devices. So. Let's get started here, and up on my screen you'll see my Productivity Series uh, PLC um, software running, and we'll just call up our Click uh, PLC, and the first thing we need to do is to actually set up the uh, communication port. So let's look at the setup, and we'll go to COM um, port setup, and this will be uh, on port number one, which is our Ethernet port. Let's set up, and you can see here that in port number one, here's our IP address, which is 192.168.1.130 with sub mask of 255, 255, 255, 0, and the default gateway was 0, 0, 0, 0. This means that it does not have exposure to the internet itself. Then we have our timeouts, and we'll leave those as a default. Under our server, um, you'll see port number 502, and we'll leave that as a, um, a default. And client inactivity timeout, we'll just leave that at 60 seconds, but we'll soon see how that heartbeat works. So hit cancel on that one, we're okay. Um, so that's our port setup. The next thing we need to do is determine the addresses that we're going to be using. So in our particular case, what we'll do is, is DH1 to DH10 as the read area from the productivity. So the productivity will be writing to those addresses. Um, from our point of view of the click and DH11 to DH20 will be the right area for the click. So that's what we're actually going to be reading from the um, Proactivity series. So to get the Modbus addresses to that, what we can do is go to our address picker under our navigation tool here or um, under program we go address picker or control T and we'll go down to our DH and one and we can go to the expand that a little bit and hit display the Modbus address so our first Modbus address is 424577 represents DH1 and then that will go all the way down and then DH11 is 424587 so we have to remember those a couple of addresses there while we're programming in our um, productivity series. So since the productivity is the uh, client or the master, that's what's going to communicate back over. All right, so we'll just close that down and we'll close our click software down and go back to our productivity. And just to verify under setup, we have our hardware configuration. We can go to our click on our CPU here and we can then look at our, our Ethernet port and this gives us our IP address for Ethernet which is 192.168.116 we have our subnet mask which is the same we put a default gateway in here uh, which connects us to our internet and we have our uh, Modbus TCP port set for 502 so everything else is the default so we'll just close that down. We can close this down. So this, that's where the information actually comes from. So let's take it. We're communicating right now to our hardware. 
And if we take a look at our hardware, you can see here that my productivity is located down here. I have my uh, Ethernet uh, communication cable here going back to my router. Up here I have my click and there's my Ethernet port going back to my router. Now from last time we have our, our um, solo process temperature controller here communicating our Modbus RTU back into another port of our productivity. So we'll pass that information back to the click as well. Okay, so that's basically our setup and you can see that we are running and if I call up my um, Modbus, you have my Modbus read and Modbus write, they're the two instructions that we've been using and I'll just double click on Modbus write and here is the instruction. So what we're saying is we're using a structure and we're using our Ethernet port and we're going to be talking to that address of the click, which is 192.168.1.130. The TCP port number, which is 502. And the slave node number um, that we want to talk to. In this case here, because we're talking Ethernet, it really doesn't matter because it's really going by the IP address. Then we go down here to the polling and we, we're setting up automatic polling every 50 milliseconds with a pull offset of zero milliseconds. What this means is as soon as it starts pulling, it will automatically pull that uh, um, device. And then every 50 milliseconds after, it keeps on going. I've also selected the skip execution if, bus if buffer is greater than 1%. And then our start word or word swap. Then our slave Modbus starting address is is 24577 plus the um, the 400 or the 40,000 or 400,000 that's in there so that creates our Modbus address that we looked at before which was actually DH1 then are we go to our ta uh, tag name so we're using a non array tags we're going to do 10 tags and we're going to start then at DH1 which will map into or P100 net right one will map into that first Modbus address and that takes us all the way down to 10. So that's our our uh, right instruction and you'll notice on the right hand or left hand side column we don't have any instruction it automatically will start writing for us. Then going down on the read Again, when we click this, we'll get up the structure, and I've created another structure here for our Modbus read. Here, we're going to set up our Ethernet port again, and the same address as before for our click. Now, this time, we're going to turn on our automatic polling again every 50 milliseconds, which is about 20 times a second that we're going to be updating. And the pull offset this time is 25 milliseconds. So, if we think what's happening is as soon as it starts up, it it will do our write first, then 25 milliseconds later, it'll execute this, and then every 50 milliseconds afterwards. So I've sta staggered my communication links. Then I have my starting address here, which is 24587, which corresponds to DH11. Then we've, we put our na uh, tag name uh, mapping in here, Again, did 10, and I've, we called them click network read 1 to 10. So that's where the information is going to go to. And again, you'll notice that we have nothing here as an input contact. Then from the productivity, we are, we have another rung here that uh, it's a two second bit. So it's on for one second, off for one second. And this will write the first bit in the network write so that our click can uh, our click can actually look at that and determine whether or not it's pulsing. And the last part of our program here is a network read. So the clicks are going to write something. We're going to turn out the next bit on so that we can tell the throughput of the controller. 
So that is it for programming. So let's just take a look at um, what we have here on a click. Here we go. So on the click here, uh, we have always on, and what we're doing is separating. We're taking DH1 and we're breaking that up into the 16 bits for us. Then what we're doing is we're looking at the uh, hardware. And so let's uh, monitor that. So we're, we're seeing what's actually happening. Everything's running right now. So the heartbeat. So it takes the very first heartbeat bit, which is C1. And it will start a timer. And the timer is set for milliseconds, uh, 2000 milliseconds. And you see the current time. So as the heartbeat goes on for a second, off for a second, it will um, indicate the time. Then what we do is when a timeout bit happens after the two seconds, if it's on or off for that long time, it will actually activate our communication error flag. So that is our communication bit status. So let's see that in operation. And if we were to unplug the actual click ethernet port, you can see that I time out, or I should time out, and it will actually turn on my actual output, uh, which is right here. Now I've also lost communication. So I'll plug that back in, and what you'll see is we've established communication again. Now the next one that we're going to do is actually uh, time how long it takes for the information to get back and forth. So in our case here, we have always on, and we're actually unpacking the bits, or packing up the bits from C17 to C32 into DH11, uh, or 11. So we use the one second clock pulse to toggle C17 on and off. And when we have C17 on, it starts a timer. And then when we have C2 on, which is the second uh, bit that the proactivity we were writing. So we saw that ladder, which uh, automatically activates that output. When it comes on, it actually will copy then the timer value, T3, into DH12. And this is actually in um, uh, this value here is currently in hex. And that's the end of the program. So if we were to monitor, just uh, call it the data view here. And right here, where's our integer? So we're looking at 50 milliseconds is currently our update time. 51, 50, 51 for our uh, values to read and write 10 uh, registers each. So. That's how you set up our Modbus TCP. Very straightforward, uh, very easy. And we also mentioned that uh, our solo, we're actually communicating from our solo and we can copy those parameters into our click. And we've done that right up here on DH2 and DH3. And let's just change the format to an integer for both of these. So, what you'll see is because we changed the integer, our present value is 23.1. So there it is, 23.1. And our set value is uh, 30.0, and which is exactly what we read up on our, our data view. So let's we'll close that down. We'll go back to our uh, productivity. And on the productivity, you'll notice that we have our Modbus RTU mastered master and if we go down to the bottom this is the master that we created before what we do is we're copying the solo present value into net write 2 and net write 3 as our set value so one instruction we start putting things up on the network between these two controllers 
So very, very quick, very easy in order to um, communicate back and forth. And what you can see here is if I call up my um, right, here's my right with my um, solo information on the instruction. And if I go down to my read, there's my reading bit and there's my current update time. My throughput time is 50 uh, milliseconds. In order to send something on the network, get something back in return. So very quick response time uh, for this whole and very easy to set up. It's a one shot type of deal. So let's uh, um, now all the links and everything that you see here um, and you can download the program are all available at our website at accautomation.ca. Now, if you like this video and like to see more, there are three ways in which you can help us out. You can give us a thumbs up so other people can find this information. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also go to ACC Automation and subscribe to our website. When you do, notification will be given to you every time we publish new content to the site. You'll also get two free ebooks on numbering systems and robust data logging. And the third thing to do to help us out is, is to tell a friend or colleague about the site. Alright, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.